All right, uh, we are going to get started. So um, first off, thank you everybody for uh, for joining us today um, on this the what third or fourth in a record breaking heat wave in Maine. So I'm sure we're all sweaty and pounding water um, or whatever beverage you're choosing to drink on this hot night. Um, so thank you for joining us for, uh, for what I think is going to be a really cool conversation. Um, so my name is Emily Burnham. I am a reporter and feature writer with the Bank for Dealing News. I've been here for a long time and um, I've been covering arts and culture and entertainment and food and small businesses and all kinds of stuff in uh, the Bangor area for uh, most of that time. So um, this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart and uh, I'm very excited to talk with everybody about all this stuff. So a um, couple things, uh, our sponsor this evening is Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. They are our uh, ter tourmaline sponsor for our events. They have been a great partner for the past couple of years for most of our events. And uh, we're just so glad that they share our passion for telling stories about Maine um, and meeting interesting people and learning new things. Um, and uh, for those of you who are uh, joining us tonight that are subscribers to the BDN, thank you so much. We appreciate your support and we're glad you're here. Um, for those of you that are not subscribers, um, if you like what you hear, and you like what you read and you like, you wanna be a part of our community of readers, um, it's really easy to subscribe. Just go to bangordillionews.com and click subscribe right in the upper corner. And we have lots of options for monthly, yearly print, just digital on and on and on. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you. Um, so uh, the discussion tonight is about public art in downtown Bangor and specifically, um, the Wheat Paste Mural Project, which has been going on for several years now. And we have some of the people that uh, started this event, or started this uh, program uh, with us here tonight, as well as some of the artists that are featured this year. So with that in mind, um, it might be good if everybody just kind of introduce themselves since we've got, uh, I believe, five people joining us in the discussion tonight. So I'm going to start with the screen that's closest to me, to, to my little talking head. So uh, Josh and Susie, why don't you guys introduce yourself and we'll just kind of go from there. Sure. I'm Joshua Gass. I'm the managing director of Launchpad. I'm Susie Violet. Um, I'm the project coordinator for the Wheat Pace project this year for 2021. Whoever wants to go next can go next. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Annette Dodd, and I am the co owner of the Rock and Art Shop and Soames Gallery in downtown Bangor. And I'm also the co-chair of the Beautification Committee, which is part of the Downtown Bangor Partnership. And I painted the greetings from Bangor, Maine mural and helped get the Wheat Paste project started in 2018. I'm uh, Peter Walls and um, I'm an artist in Stockton Springs. And um, COVID last year with the cancellation of galleries and shows, uh, allowed me to dive into grant writing and uh, public arts. And <clears throat> I was just installed a mural in Bucksport, Maine <clears throat> in April. Um, it's on the side of the Alamo building. And, um, and then I applied for the uh, Wheat Paste Mural Project. And I'm thrilled to be working in Bangor. I think it's <clears throat> a great spot and um, a lot of great buildings and uh, people. I'm Sam Bullard. I use she, they pronouns and I am a freelance artist in Bangor, Maine. Grown up here, always loved being here and doing art in this town. Um, I have a lot of different shows throughout um, downtown Bangor and the surrounding areas um, most summers. And I'm one of the participating artists in the Wheat Paste murals. I am also an activist in the area that works at the Peace and Justice Center and volunteers for the Greater Bangor Housing Coalition, as well as Mabel Wadsworth Center. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Um, so this is, uh, we have such a cool group of people here um, that can all talk about all the sort of different aspects of um, getting the community engaged in the arts, whether it's visual arts, it's uh, something like this, which has the, this sort of roots in guerrilla graffiti art movements, um, you know, and I, I, I we'll, get, we'll get to that in a minute. But before we talk about how we got from almost none of this to a lot of stuff, a lot of permanent and semi-permanent murals in downtown Bangor. 
Can we talk a little bit about sort of what public art, like the wheat paste murals, like the more permanent stuff that you've done in that, like some of the other stuff that's happened in downtown, what that does for a community? Like what, what are the benefits either sort of, uh, you know, aesthetically, which is the obvious one, um, what does it do to lift community spirit that make people think? Does it benefit the town economically? Um, you know, I open that up to everybody. Um, you know, for you, like, what does the community engaging with that with with the work that artists do? Um, how does it benefit communities like Bangor and other ones? I think the easy one is it it instills a sense of pride is a big part of it. I mean, you you have to love where you live in my opinion, <laughs> you should strive to make it a better place. And I think that by painting these murals, I hope that we're giving people, you know, a happier, better place to live, more beautiful place to live. Um, and that's a big one for me. For me, yeah, I know. No, 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 go ahead, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, for me, um, I like to put a lot of heart into the messages that I portray with my art. And one of the things that makes me so proud is that like a lot of my queer art has been accepted like in Bangor and having that as like a wheat paste mural this year has been feel feeling really great, especially where the community has felt so disconnected, especially in a time of isolation. I think seeing displays like that of love and acceptance for the community just out in the open is really inviting and makes it feel more at home, more comforting for people like me and my friends. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, those are all sort of like, I think part of the same, um, you know, idea that when you see, when you visually see, you know, uh, affirmation of we love our community and we love the people in it. I mean, that's a, that's actually like a visual manifestation of, of how you feel about your community. And that goes for not just the people that live here, the people that come to visit here. When they see that, they, even if they don't, consciously think about it, there's a sense that, um, you know, this, we take pride in where we are, who we are, and, you know, we have something to say about it. Um, so that's what kind of how I've always viewed all the different efforts that we've, we've, the, the community has uh, undertaken to bring art in downtown. So um, before we talk about this year's Wheat Pace project, um, let's go back. Let's like turn back clock to like 10 years ago um, when, uh, public art was kind of still not really happening in downtown. We had, we had statues and we had monuments and memorials and things like that. But in terms of things that were created by artists who are living and working in our community, it wasn't necessarily something that was happening, you know, in, in our community. Um, Annette, I know that you remember a certain artist by the name who went by the name Pigeon uh, about yeah. 10 years ago. Um, can you talk a little bit about what he did and how he kind of introduced the concept of wheat paste murals to the community. Absolutely. Um, so I, you know, 10 years ago was also the start of the, the, you know, the art walk. And I just remember that, you know, Pigeon and the art walk, it all kind of happened at the same time. And it felt like this renaissance period in downtown. I was also young, but still I felt like, you know, downtown was changing for the better. There was a sense that there were artists here that we were, you know, really gonna make this into this community. And I think that since then it really has been building. Um, but he, so <laughs> Pigeon did all of these little tiny pigeon, life-size pigeon uh, caricatures and he put them throughout the downtown. And what was exciting about it is, you know, you'd go downtown and it was like in less than a week, there were all of these little pigeons all over. And some of them had these great little quotes. Some of them had hats, some of them had shirts. Um, and he was just in general, making it exciting. People were going downtown to see these. And it wasn't like it was getting a new story or anything. It was just this like grassroots fun art project that was popping up that people were talking about and no one knew who it was. And then it was eventually, you know, we figured it out, but um, you know, it was not one of those things where I think he really started that idea that you can change this, you know, downtown Bangor 
is small. It's you know big enough to feel like a metropolitan area, but it's small enough to be changed by a creative person. And that was cool. <laughs> Started it all. Yeah. Because I was going to say, like, that was really kind of a catalyst for a lot of what has happened since. Um, so uh, the, and I'm sorry to keep monopolizing you, Annette, but you are, have played such a, a huge role in all of this kind of stuff. So um, the, after Pigeon and some other people put up Wheat Pace, you know, so there were a few people that also did that mm -hmm. as they saw him do it. Um, the first piece of permanent public art that went up in downtown in, a, in, in the way that, that we're kind of talking about was the Welcome to Bangor, the Greetings from Bangor Main Mural. Um, can you talk a little bit about like the process of making that mural a reality and how you ended up not only getting permission to do it, but the process and, ch and choosing that image, but just the process of getting that on that wall? Well, um, so at that time, because it was this renaissance and everyone wanted to, you know, try to get some more art into downtown, all we kept on hearing of, about were these stories of people trying to paint murals and, and getting denied, basically. There were a few people who wanted to try to do public art, um, but apparently at the time, which this has changed now, but at the time you had to go through the historical commission to, to paint anything. And if they were not the right colors or something, people were getting turned down. And it was this rumor, which was untrue, that you could not paint art because it would not go with the historical commission's idea of what sh the building should look like. Um, and so I was an art teacher at the time and I was, every time I'd get off the interstate and drive into downtown, I would wait at the stoplight and look at the tavern and it was just this blank white wall. And I was like, hmm, like this is crying out to be artwork. And I thought, that's not too tall. I can get on a ladder. I've always been okay with getting on a ladder since I worked at the movie theater. I'd be the one to climb all the way up to the ladder and do the top stuff. So I started to think about, can I paint a mural there? And then uh, one day the I was like, you know, going through Bangor memorabilia and I saw that postcard and it made me think of the Austin postcard mural and other, you know, it's not something completely unique, but it's, good and it's sometimes you don't have to reinvent a wheel so you know we're like I was like this is it this is what I'm gonna do so I applied to the historical commission to get this done and it was a lot of hoops to jump through there were a lot of you know a lot of dotting the i's and crossing the t's um and I had to go in front of the historical commission when it was like taped at city hall and present my case so that I wanted to get this done um and it passed and then it was just a matter of painting it, which after it passed, I was like, okay, now I've got to paint this, you know, 40 foot mural. <laughs> but it, it was great. It was a lot of fun. And, and um, at the time, because I do have the, the shop, um, I'm able to take out a little bit. And so I basically did like Tuesdays and Thursdays, two hours a week and painted that mural. And it was the first one to happen. And I was hoping it was going to just like start the wave and everyone would go. But the thing I didn't think about was the fact that you know, I was able to do that because I did have the shop and I was taking my time, but it's a little bit harder when you have to, you know, do it and not get paid. So that's another part of it. So. Yeah. Um, you know, and even though, you know, the, the sort of tidal wave of people suddenly saying, oh, I'm going to put one up here and I'm going to paint this and I'm going to paint that, even though that didn't materialize right away, I think with like a lot of things in downtown Bangor is a little bit of a slow burn that it took a, it took a little bit of time to kind of coalesce mm -hmm. and get some momentum behind um, uh, the effort to do things like that. That mm -hmm. said, there have been other sort of pop-up things. I remember there were the, the pianos in the pocket park, um, which a local artist, uh, she decorated a piano that was just out there in public that, you know, it was like the art piano and anybody could come and play it. And people did. You know, I remember like everyone from just random people walking by would come by and play piano to the Bangor Symphony brought their soloist from a concert and had him play in there. So it's kind of a neat array of, of, of things that have happened in downtown. Um, so from that point and those kind of things that happened in, in, in you know, whether it was the piano project, your mural, Pigeon, um, how does that translate into becoming 
the Wheat Paste Mural Project. Um, and I open this up to, to both you and to, I know, Josh, you've been involved in so much of, you know, of the creative work that's happening in downtown. Um, can we talk about that first year and what it took to get um, those first uh, wheat pastes up in 2018 and like kind of when you started to think about it and get that going? Um, just talk a little bit about how that first summer happened. I feel like Josh should probably take the introduction as far as um, because Josh was the one who took the uh, who brought uh, Kirsten Gill to the downtown Bangor partnership meeting and so I'll have him talk about how he, you know, brought him to the meeting and then I'll take it from there. Okay. So I'm yeah. tossing the ball to you, Josh. Okay. <laughs> well, I think to your point earlier about pigeon. One of the things that I liked about pigeon was not just that he put these wheat pace out and and they did have messages and they were very but it was also he was very strategic about how he placed them and many of them were placed in places you might not normally look they were not in your line of sight always you had to kind of look for them and then not long after that like i, I guess i guess a few years after that it ended I had run into Kirsten Gilg, who works for the Maine Arts Commission, and he had led a project in Gardner, Maine. And for anybody who's been to Gardner, one of the challenges that Gardner has is as the community grew uh, and the downtown was established, many of the buildings are facing outward to you as you approach Gardner. I'm sure if anybody's been to Gardner recently, you may have noticed this, but many of the buildings, the back sides of them are, are to you as you approach it. So they had a project where they had done a wheat paste. Uh, they had done wheat paste murals in some very sort of hard to find and sort of um, not, not, I guess, in your line of sight places. And they had done it because they wanted to make Gardner look more attractive. And I was just, when he told me about this project, I was just really into it. I thought it would be a good fit for Bangor. And um, I introduced him to the Downtown Bangor Partnership. I, I had him come and speak just about how they had gone about doing it, how they had picked the artists, how they had gone about installing. And I just felt that the entire project was very uh, interesting. And I thought that it might be a good fit for Bangor. So he came and he talked to us. And I think from that conversation, Annette basically uh, grabbed onto that and said, okay, cool, we, we can definitely do this in Downtown Bangor. And then it was born into the first year of the Wheat Paste Project. But what I was attracted to was the concept that public art doesn't always have to be in your face. It can also be kind of hidden and also singular in experience, right? In that you might look at something and it's not for 30 people driving by, but one person as they walk by. And I was also struck by that by Pigeon. So I think all of these things were sort of leading together in terms of my inspiration and in, in, in being motivated to bring that to the table. So that's pretty much what I did was I introduced Kirsten to a variety of other people that were interested in taking that. And actually, before anything else, you know, this is a question that was posed in the chat, and we do try to do questions later on in the in the uh, in the chat. But um, this is worth mentioning: is they somebody wanted to know how, how you like what the formula for wheat paste is, like how they, you know, how you put it up, like just if you could talk about the actual physical act of wheat pasting, that would be great. Cause I, of course, we're also used to this being a part of downtown. If you haven't actually seen them, you might not know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure Annette can talk about that, but it's just really fascinating because when we took on this project, we didn't know really. Yeah. We, we did not know what hundred percent that process was going to be like. So it was interesting to hear from Annette and other people who had done it, but it is a bit of a, it's not super complicated, but there's a bit of a process to it. So it is interesting. We could talk about that now or later, but it's definitely an interesting thing how that logistically gets taken care of. Yeah, well, Annette, definitely uh, tell us about the project or whomever. I know, Susie, you've done a lot of them. You worked on a lot of them this year as well. So whoever wants to talk about just like the, you know, literally how you put them on a building and what it is. I can, so I'll speak a little bit to the, to making it the first year, just because it was one of those things where when I, when I originally got there to the meeting and saw what Kirsten had to say and was like, this is what we're gonna do. It was also a way I was thinking I can get more public art in downtown. But again, we had the images, we did all that. And then he sent me the recipe for the wheat paste and he's like, you probably shouldn't make it inside. And I was like, 
hmm, I didn't expect that. So w w the first year I had three of my friends over and we had this giant like lobster pot, which was like, you know, 10 gallons, if not more. And you're, I was out there with a stick, like a cauldron, you know, of like basically we're like witches out there brewing up this wheat paste, which is flour, water, and sugar. But, you know, it just a different, and you heat it up until it turns smooth basically and you stir it the whole time and you're trying to get this consistency of like pancake batter and uh that then once you make it you've got to let it cool and then i'll let uh susie because you just put a bunch of them up if you want to take how you put it up and all that yeah you, yeah <laughs> so the process of installing them um i would compare it to like paper mache kind of uh where you just want to like basically like take a paintbrush or like a roller and give it a good go like on top of the brick and then um, kind of lather it there and then you take the paper or the mural and you basically just like paste it on top of the brick and then you go go again over with the paste and like a paintbrush and kind of smooth it out and really just make sure you're like getting out all the air bubbles um, and it's it's semi-permanent so after you know after like a few months of like weather it tends to like start to peel away but that's actually kind of like one of the reasons the project was like really interesting to us because I mean just because it's temporary doesn't necessarily make it any less meaningful I think it's really interesting for us to be able to like you know remove them and put more up every year making it an annual project yeah part of the kind of neat part of it is it's uh sort of ephemeral quality you know um and the fact that I I'd love to hear what you guys have to think because it does seem like you know Annette you were mentioning that 10 years ago, however long ago it was, there was some hesitation from, not just from the city, the you know, sort of city government bodies themselves, but maybe from some building owners about the idea of anything like this, because it seemed like it, is it graffiti? Am I gonna like this? Am I gonna, you know, is this what we want? Um, and this was a really clever way of kind of, you know, saying, well, it's not gonna be forever. We can take it off, no problem. It's, you know, but also it suddenly, it became this thing where people could actually like uh, see why it was a good thing and why it worked. Was that intentional or was that a great side effect? That was 100% intentional. I also got a whole list of building owners that were willing to put art on their building, which like, you know, property owners that are willing to work with artists is key to making more art in downtown. So it was definitely the, the plan. Um, the first year we did this, I also had to get up again in front of the historical commission and um, Sean Gambrell, who, you know, is not with us anymore as far as in Bangor, he's moved on, but he's still, he's still uh, doing great things where he is, but he was the one who was working for the city at the time and he saw all the hoops that I had to jump through in order to get this approved by the historical commission. And he's like, this is not right. He's like, you should not have to do this much work to get something art on a building, you know, because it was, I literally spent hours and I actually paid money for each artist, you know, so paid money for the application. And then it was like, had to stand up in front of the, the historical commission and, and present why this was important. Um, but out of that, though, I actually had some some property owners come to the historical commission meeting and like back me up. And they're like, no, this is great. This is great for downtown. So it was kind of an exciting moment when, you know, they approved it because everyone said there's no way they're going to approve this. There's no way they're going to do this. And they did. Um, but also Sean Gambro was the one who said, you know, let's just let's just let building owners paint whatever color they want on their building. Let's stop doing this. And in 2019, I did not have to go in front of the historical commission and apply to, to do that. And so that's like a huge step for murals in downtown Bangor, because if you had to get every single one approved, and it is a little daunting if you don't know the process, you know, it was, it definitely felt like an uphill battle. So that was an exciting thing that happened out of that, for yeah. sure. And plus it had kind of the added benefit of, of kind of helping along the process of like, modernizing the city's approach to sort of like how uh you know uh, like the the historical commission uh, you know approved things and how things are supposed to look and facades and all that stuff so it actually had beyond the really cool aesthetic community development aspect of it actually had like a change in policy so it actually affected kind of the way uh you know the city looked at how it keeps the character of the downtown
Um, so we have some, we have a little slideshow of some of the images, and this will be a great opportunity to let Sam and Peter talk about uh, their work. Um, but before we do that, I'd love to ask um, the theme for the murals this year um, is unity. And I was wondering, you know, it may be obvious, but it may not be why you landed on that as a theme. I know in previous years, there's been themes about the natural world um, and, you know, it's sort of more, a more uh, specific kind of theme, but unity is something that's pretty broad. So can you talk a little bit about why you guys chose that as a theme this year? I'll add to that conversation and say, I think the We Pace project is so great because it does have that semi-permanence, you know, element to it. So when you're looking at it from the perspective of the city, they won't get as as involved because it can just be removed or what have you, as opposed to a mural, a painted mural, mural that might be more permanent. But um, actually, I believe the theme for this year came from our executive director. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's I correct. believe, if I remember correctly, our executive director, Meg Charette, came up with the idea for mm -hmm. Unity. And I think her thought process was when she pitched it was, we'd come through a very bizarre year and we were bringing the project back after a year of sort of dormancy. Mm -hmm. And I think she really wanted to pick a theme that was inclusive and re made us re remember that we are all living together, whether you are in your um, direct community or maybe a larger community. Um, and so I think she was trying to pick something that just really brought people together when, when, and, and so when we were looking at the submissions, we were heavily influenced by the theme. Mm -hmm. We were open to other art that was coming in, but most of the things we picked, I think, yeah, were related to Definitely. the theme. And it made us feel like we were picking things that reminded us that, we, again, we are all in this together. This is a, a group effort. And so um, we wanted something that really spoke to that, especially after the year that we've just gone through. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, well, I'm going to um, share this uh, slideshow of images. And then, you know, we can talk that I think the first couple ones up here are from both Sam and Peter. So that's, that's awesome. So let me just uh, share my screen. I am, uh, hold on one second, share screen. Okay. All right, can everybody see that? We all good? All right, good, excellent. So um, this first image is by Sam Bullard. And Sam, I would love for you to talk about, you know, what this image means to you and what you were trying to uh, convey with it. Yeah, sure. So this was a design that I pulled from um, my sketchbook in 2019 called Acceptance. And I sketched it during a time when I was still a closeted queer person, but I was really starting to become a part of my community and really get to know kind of the queer scene around Bangor and start to like meet more friends that were part of that. And it really felt like home for me for the first time. I never really quite felt at home in other communities quite like I did in this one. And so I wanted to start expressing that through my art in subtle ways. And um, with this piece, it was one of the first very like openly gay, um, pieces I'd drawn and then shared with my um, social media. And I got some pretty good feedback. And after about another year of getting used to the idea of being like fully out, I came out with a full pride show at West Market Square. Like it was a big reveal and everything. And that's how I came out publicly um, to both my family my friends and everyone else as an artist. And this was one of the pieces featured in that show. Um, it was definitely like a fan favorite and I was really happy to see it like find a home, the original piece. And then when the murals um, came around this year, which I didn't expect it to do and it had the theme of unity, I figured this is a really great example of it because one of the things I missed the most during this pandemic was like a sort of loss of community and not really feeling as connected to that family that I developed through that. and. I think that having a piece like this to express that kind of makes me feel more connected with that family of mine. And um, yeah, that's what I have to say about Amazing. that. Sam, where is this? If people want to find your, your piece, where, where in downtown is it? I believe it's on a street called Cross Street um, in between Columbia Street and like the main, the main road in downtown. 
and it's near the antique mall and the uh, Harvest Moon. Yeah, one of the fun parts about the Wheat Face Mural is it is a bit of a scavenger hunt, which is which I, I love that aspect of it, walking around and maybe even seeing one you hadn't seen the past couple of times, even walking around. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. Um, now, uh, this is not by uh, one of the folks that are here, so they're here with us tonight. So um, Josh or Annette or whomever, or, uh, Susie, could you just talk about this one as well and, and who it's by? Yeah, sure. Um, so this piece is on Middle Street um, and it's not far from Cross. It's like the next street over. So it's perpendicular to like Columbia and Main Street. Um, and this piece is by Siobhan Gill. Um, and she is one of the tattoo artists at um, Bird and Bones Tattoo Studio. And she did, a, she did a piece along with Haley Winters, another tattoo artist down there. And they're both um, on the same wall. So hers is beside um, Siobhan's. And I'm not sure what her inspiration was exactly on this, but you can certainly find all of the information on these murals on our website. Um, and they, each artist gave, gave like a little snippet on their inspiration and how it like, you know, revolved around the theme a little bit, so. Um, and this next one, which I accidentally just jumped, totally jumped ahead to. Um, so uh, could you tell a little bit about, someone talk a little bit about this one as well and where it is? I, I can already immediately tell where it is, but some people might yeah. not. Uh, so this one is um, right on Hammond, and then once again, yeah, I think that's Columbia and Hammond. Yeah, it is Columbia. So just it's on the just corner. down, just down from the Fiddlehead. Yep. And this one's by Amanda Gray, and I do remember um, a little bit of her inspiration because it really kind of like, you know, it made me smile. Her inspiration for this one was her daughter really is into snails, and they have like a friend who has pet snails or something. Okay. So when she like kind of thought of unity, I think she like thought of her friends and her family and kind of brought that all together with like the snail and obviously, the, the, you know, the, um, the message to be kind is like so important for all of us to remember throughout anything to just be yeah. kind to one another. Yeah. All right. And this one, the B one, that is on the side of the, uh, the building that has Grindhouse and Bangor Sandwich Company. And that's definitely a, a very, very visible uh, spot. And I know a, a, a spot that certain other artists have had their eye on for a long time for some maybe more permanent stuff. But uh, you guys could talk a little bit about this one as well. That'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, so Caitlin Helfin submitted this piece um, and it was part of a project that she had done uh, and she had like two other pieces that went with it um, and I think basically it just kind of goes over um, she called it bee endangerment uh, and it kind of goes over how important like bees are to our um, you know ecosystem, ecosystem. Yeah. it's highlighting the fact that there has been a significant drop in the bee population in the honeybee population over the last decade plus in the United States, in the world, and how important bee honeybees are to our ecosystem, um, including food and all sorts of other, um, basically like things we need to survive, right? So she did this whole project uh, about that. And we liked, she gave us three pieces. We picked this one of all of them. And um, it does include some information on, um, the statistics of the drop in the honeybee population. So we are actually considering doing a piece, uh, a, an exhibit with her at the Arts Exchange this fall that will have all the pieces that are part of this. But this is probably the most uh, cause-oriented one that we have as part of the current setup. Yeah. All right. Oh, this one is so pretty. I love this one. Um, and that's on Franklin Street. Yeah, that's, um, so that's, uh, that's on Franklin Street, just across from the post office. And um, this particular artist uh, did not actually want to be named as their actual name. They had some reasons for wanting to be a bit anonymous. Mm -hmm. But we really love this piece. And so um, these buildings have just been redone in the last year plus as part of a renova renovation effort of this building. So we were really excited to add this one. And we felt this one just spoke to, again, um, this sort of like we're all together and there's yeah. so many different types of us 
And in Bangor, we try to be so inclusive mm -hmm. of these different types of people. So we felt that it just spoke to that, I think. I think so. And yeah. Yeah, I think as you go through, it's really interesting to see how every artist like interpreted the theme and, yeah. you know, turned it into something. Yeah. Um, now this one I know is on the, uh, uh, it's near the, the bridge over the Kanduskeg uh, on State Street on the side of, it's on the side of the, uh, the building of the Chamber of Commerce is in, correct? I believe so. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, and that's a really a nice visible spot as well. Um, and plus there's, you know, it's right next to all these other flowers as well. That's really that's, great. That's kind of part of the reason why we put that one there. I'm not sure if the flowers have bloomed yet. I haven't been down there recently, but I think once they do, it's a beautiful spot. And the way that the um, the colors and the photo like contrasted against that, that light colored wall really was a good, it's a good move. Definitely. Now, I have not seen this one, so if you could talk, talk about where this is, and uh, I mean, I think it's by City Hall, but I can't quite tell. Yeah, so if you walk to City Hall, this is on the retaining wall as you walked up. They had done some improvements to City Hall to make it more um, ADA accessible, and this particular one is right there. And the artist is an artist who has never really done anything like this before, but he submitted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we just loved the design, the idea of Maine being the head of the axe into the um, tree stump. So we mm -hmm. just really liked this one. Yeah. A lot of his inspiration came from like the lumber in Maine too, yeah. which is really interesting. You can read more about it on our website, but um, he does tie unity into it. And it's really interesting the way that he was inspired with that. So that's great. All right. Finally, we've gotten to you, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, before you talk about this one in particular, um, Peter, if you wouldn't, I know that you have done some other uh, public art in other communities in, uh, especially in Eastern Maine. I, I, now, if I'm correct, you did something in Bucksport before uh, this project, correct? correct? That's correct, yep. This yeah, can you talk a little bit about that project before you talk about these fishies? Sure, yeah, we just installed, uh, I worked with artist David Hurley uh, from Belfast, and we installed um, a mural on the side of the Alamo Theater, um, working with the Downtown Bucksport Committee and the Maine Community Foundation. And uh, it was a great project um, we worked on over the winter, uh, a busy COVID winter. And um, um, and again, we, we were, well, Annette was talking about the community. <clears throat> we, were, we were just amazed in the installation. We do a lot of our murals here in the studio on panels, which we install later. <clears throat> so it's a big unveiling of sorts, but the the uh, community reaction and the people on the street coming up and wanting to help and talk about the work and um, be part of it and how happy they were is just, you know, it's amazing, you know, especially, you know, Bucksport, you know, it's had its, you know, its issues over the past couple of years with the closing of the mill <clears throat> and they're, you know, they're trying to do their thing too, just like Bangor is working on um, getting art into the community. Um, yeah, working on that. That was my last one. Yeah. Yeah. And then tell me a little bit about, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, these fish and what kind of fish they are and uh, what the idea behind this piece was. But they're actually salmon, but not trout. Yeah. But it, it, yeah. it, my, my mural got uh, modified a bit due to uh, the printing process. And um, I was originally working on some designs, <clears throat> um, sort of referencing some of our. Uh, ecology and fish farm issues here in Belfast and uh, Bucksport. There's a lot of uh, community opposition, um, a lot of fighting going on. And uh, I created an image. Originally, these were the f these fish were jumping um, with a backdrop of a fabric, <clears throat> of sort of a main plaid uh, design, which is sort of a, you know, holding it all together and hoping people will come together about, you know, as a community, not just about for or against the fish farm. So. Um, and it got modified and it was fun and you know I love the building it got put on and just as a design project it came out great. Um, yeah I love that um, you know some of the most enthusiastic uh, businesses in downtown Bangor for these murals have been bars you know <laughs> and the Waverly and the Tavern in particular have been so into it um, you know I, I I, I just noting that I just love that so much. <laughs> um, I was working with Evan, you know, the we saw la in the last image, I believe, and uh, got to meet you know a bunch of these artists I don't know in the Bangor area. And Evan was great because he knew the history of the bar and uh, 
all the ins and outs of it. And it was just a fun experience to do. Absolutely. All right, what do we got here? Oh yeah, this one's also on Hammond Street. Um, this one's uh, the same building as Umami, correct? Yeah, that's great. And then, um, well, these are cool. So uh, now where is this? This is on um, the side of Mexicali Blues, but uh, if you, which you can't drive this way, but it's on the side looking up Hammond Street, looking up State Street as it turns into Hammond Street. So um, right across from where uh, the Grindhouse is. Yeah. That's yep. great. Yep. And okay, so this is from uh, last year. Well, not last year, because I don't know what year it is anymore because the pandemic has just made time just concertina on itself. But um, so this is from two years ago. Um, and and that's, you know, I mean, there's a thousand things to say about what's in this image. So, and I, you know. Well, it's, um, that's actually by Orson who did, you know, the He's pigeon. original pigeon. <laughs> and so I contacted him and said, hey, we should do something. And he said, I want to paint your brother who um, passed away. And so that was his tribute. And the uh, it's really great though, because um, my brother's there and then the, the drawings that he has like this are some of his homeschoolers and just kids that he inspired. And they all drew images of things that he thought he, that, you know, that, that he taught them about. And so that was his sort of tribute. Yeah, it's really, and it was so eye-catching and so beautiful, um, especially that wall. That's obviously just down the street from the Rock and Art Shop. It's in the Pocket Park next to Central Street Farmhouse on Central Street, as you can see the sign. Um, so, and that's also from two years ago. That was, um, I know who painted that one. That was by Kat Johnson, who was a local artist, um, also on the Waverly. Um, again, super enthusiastic. Uh, supporters of the Wheat Pace project. Um, so this is from two years ago. Uh, that's from three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think I recognize that little little fella in that image. That's again on the side of the, the Center Street Farmhouse building. Uh, Annette, could you mention, talk a little bit about uh, who painted that one or who created so, that one? Well, that's my, that's my hand ripping up a carrot. And I felt like it was sort of, again, this like I kind of claim that spot, but <laughs> that's like, you know, like grab hold, dig in, you know, be, be here, present in garden. That's my little kid. That's, uh, that's Sammy when he was two, he's four now, um, but, or just turned two. And I just like the image, it's a good one, so. It's just cute. Um, and this is just, if anybody's curious about what putting a uh, wheat paste up looks like, this is what it looks like. Um, so it's a it's a ladder intensive project from from what I've 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 heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my advice for this year was go a little bit smaller. Um, Kirsten had said don't go big, and of course I was like we're going big, <laughs> and then we did it, and I was like Oof, I can I understand now why he said that. Um, but it made a really good impact when, when it was big, but it makes a great impact now. And like you said, it's a, it's a scavenger hunt and it makes it so much fun. Definitely. Um, here's just another one from 2008. This was also on that same building on, uh, where, uh, Grindhouse and it's on State Street. You can't see it coming. You can't drive in that direction. It's in the, the opposite, you know, of the one way. But it was also bees, so that's the bee wall. Mm, maybe this that. is maybe this needs to be something permanent, huh? Maybe. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so this is, and this is a really, I think, a great way to kind of, you know, start to wrap up this conversation because this is these are two brand new permanent murals or permanent piece of public art that were just installed in the past couple of weeks. Um, and uh, Annette, if you could just talk about. What sure. these are and how you made it happen. Um, so I, I would love ideally to start to pair up some of the walls with artists who are willing to paint them and make that happen next summer. Uh, that's you know in the plans to try to get a few more permanent murals. Um, but this particular mural is something that I wanted to do. This is something that my brother designed. Um, my brother loved Bangor. He was just like 
constantly talking about Bangor to the point where people from away would come to Bangor and be like, I've got to go to Bangor. Tony loves this town. And so um, he had this designed and he put it on the back of his car and on his road trips and he'd put it up in towns just like he would he loved to do road trips we just like travel to cool towns around the US and put it up and he felt like if he gets one creative person it makes a difference and I totally agree with him um so I said like I was walking by and again this is on my way to work and I was like here's this white wall I said this needs to be something and I was scrolling through, you know, images and saw this and I was like, oh, there it is. And um, the, you know, Betsy Lundy uh, gave me permission to do this. And so this is sort of a tribute to my brother as well as a great way to be like, you know, Bangor wants you. We're calling all creative people come here and make this town great. Um, like I said, we're, we're just big enough to feel city and just small enough to make a difference. Um, and then the really cool thing next to it, this high voltage is what I'm titling it, uh, was painted by the uh, Bangor High School art students. And they did an amazing job. They came and painted this. I painted the mural in a week and they painted the utility box in a week. And ideally that's what I'd like to do is have the murals go up in a week because that's an excite, you know, the, the part of the excitement is having something all of a sudden appear just like the leap pace. Um, but yeah, that's the, you know, first little permanence to come and hopefully we'll, we'll paint more utility boxes around downtown Bangor. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to stop the share now and go back to the regular screen now. Um, so we've got uh, a few uh, questions in here. Um, and one person uh, wanted to know uh, the, the barcodes on it, the QR codes. Um, so could you explain, you know, that that's, I think that's pretty new this year. Um, you know, like, so people can scan them with their phone and, and, you know, learn more about the artist stuff. Is that what it is, Josh or uh, Susie? Yeah, basically we kind of pained over how we were going to present this, but we landed on having a digital page where people could see where they are. And we used QR codes in the hopes that that would lead people in. And it's actually been rel relatively successful. We've used a QR code system that allows us to track information mm -hmm. about who is scanning it. And we've had over 300 different scans of that QR code, which I'm pretty happy with. I mean, I don't really know what to base it against. So I don't know. We've had multiple people, hundreds of people scan the QR codes mm -hmm. and it leads you into pay, into a page that tells you what the artists were doing yeah. and where the QR codes were. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have a really good model for how we could get it out physically. So we didn't really know yeah. what to do. But we, we wanted to make sure that people could see that this was part of a larger exhibit or whatnot a larger piece of 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 multiple works so Absolutely. that's why we did that but um we were just kind of hoping it was an easy thing that people could could do on the fly mm -hmm. especially yeah. if they weren't familiar with the project before maybe visiting bangor and they weren't from the area they were able to like get an idea of what it was and that yeah. there's more if they yeah. want to you know there's like a google map too so you could follow them yeah. and uh, uh, another uh uh person in the chat wants to know, um, this is from Scott and he wants to know um, a little bit about the process. Like if somebody wanted to put up a mural, even a permanent one, um, how would they do that? Like, what's the process? It's like, yeah, I've got a great idea. Um, you know, I want to figure out where to put it and how to do it and get the money for it. Maybe you can talk a little bit about if somebody has that kind of idea to do something like that, where do they start? Annette would be the person to probably talk to you. Because she's probably the one who's pushed the envelope the most about that. But it's been kind of interesting to see. And again, she can probably talk about this more directly. But the city has a perspective on how you do it. That's changed a little bit over time. But the more that all of this is happening, the more that that conversation is changing. So it is a fluid thing. But I think Annette can probably talk about the specifics of it more. Well, you know, there the ways that... Uh, you can go about it or very many really. Uh, the big one is though, you just wanna find the wall that calls to you. Uh, if this is your first mural, I suggest doing something just like I did with my first mural and be like, can I reach it with a ladder? Because if you need a lift truck or scaffolding, it throws in another whole bit. Um, I'll tackle that one soon. 
but uh, the, the, the ladder is easy. You can, you can use a ladder to put things up um, and you don't have to rent any equipment. But if you can tackle it with a ladder and you know that you can envision your artwork up there and you know you can paint it, then the next step is just finding out who owns that building or that wall, sending an email, asking permission, begging permission if you have to, um, and hopefully getting it. And then get going if you're willing to paint it, you know, on your own time. If you'd like to get paid, I do think that you can find grants in the state of Maine for things like that um, and get out there and do things like that. Uh, the shop is currently, we, we made merchandise out of some of the murals that I've painted in the past. Um, and maybe in the future we can do things with the wheat paste too, but we, we raise money through that. So hopefully uh, the next couple of murals that will be painted will hopefully be funded through some of those proceeds as well. Um, but I will shout out to Lowe's because they actually donated all the paint for the greetings from downtown uh, Bangor mural. And they are definitely willing to donate paint and things like that if you're willing to donate time. So those are a few things. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Um, so it's all about just kind of like taking the initiative and, you know, and uh, I, I have, I, I hate to say, you know, uh, if, you, if you have any more questions, ask Annette, but you probably could, and you could probably ask the folks at Launchpad too for um, any more information on what they, you know, the process of doing a wheat paste, doing a mural, doing some other kind of installation. You know, I think if people have an idea and it's feasible, you can probably do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna wrap this up. Um, I do wanna add, so um, Peter and Sam, if you would like to talk about some of the other stuff you have coming up in terms of, you know, uh, maybe another piece of public art or where people can see your work or if you've got an exhibit coming up or something in the gallery or, a, you know, a, something online, um, just talk a little bit about where people can see more of your work in whatever format is it's available. Oh, you can yeah. start, Peter. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to be installing a mural in Monmouth, um, Maine, at an elementary school. So it's not very public, but it's a, a great 200-foot uh, mural um, of shaped panels. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one. And um, then I'm going to be showing in September uh, at Soames um, yeah. with Annette. So I have a gallery full of paintings, I'm painting right now. <laughs> Thanks. What about you, Sam? Yeah. I've got a pretty busy summer. Um, currently trying to get the giant canvas secured for a mural that I might be painting for Lowe's um, for their 100 year anniversary. I also have a show that I am putting up tomorrow at the Fork and Spoon, and it will be there for the month of July. I have another show at Body Wise Pilates in downtown that will be in September. And I'm also applying for a show themed around gender and art to celebrate pride in Hallowell. I really hope I get into that one. That would be in August through like early September. That's fabulous. Well, this has just been so much fun to talk to all you guys and you know all the different great work you're all doing all across the state and right here in Bangor. Um, if anybody has any more questions, ask them now. Otherwise, we're going to kind of wrap this up and uh, hopefully everybody's staying nice and cool. Um, so thank you, Susie, Josh, Peter, Annette, and Sam. This has been really great. And um, if you want to come downtown and look at all the murals, uh, you can go to uh, wearelaunchpad.org. Did I get that right, Josh? Okay, good. Yeah, and you can see them all there. So that's the easiest way, place to start. Or you can just walk around and see what you find. That's part of the fun too. All right, thank you everybody. And um, this, uh, this if, if you miss, if you know someone that would really enjoy this, um, all of our um, uh, events that are taped, that are on Zoom, they will be uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel. And you'll be able to watch it later if you want, if you know somebody in particular that would enjoy this. So thanks again, everybody. And we will see you at our next event. Take care, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. So much.